So you want to read more books, but struggle to find the time to do so. Or you're more of an auditory processor and learn best through audiobooks. Either way, you probably recognize some of the potential and pitfalls of listening and taking notes with audiobooks. In this video, I'm going to share with you the methods that I use for taking audiobook notes. What's up everybody? It's RJ here and welcome back to the Find Your Flow channel. This is where we go after your dream goals and spend more time in that peak state of flow. And as I mentioned, stick around for this video if you're interested in learning the best methods for getting good quality notes from your audiobooks so that you can use it whether it's in sharing the information later or for research purposes. Audio is not my preferred format of learning. And so I've had to come up with some methods for extracting as much information and making use of what I learned in audiobooks for research because I like to take lots of notes on the books that I'm reading. And first off, this isn't a sponsored video or anything. I don't care where you get your audiobooks from. I personally go with one of two sources typically. I usually go with Scribe, which is a monthly subscription that gets you multiple audiobooks rather than just one credit a month. And I also do occasionally listen to audiobooks on Audible, especially if they're Audible originals that I can't find anywhere else. And that's going to be a topic for another video coming up soon on a review of the Compete to Create book by Michael Gervais and Pete Carroll. So definitely hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and hit the bell to be notified of new video releases so that you can check out that video when it's done. So as I mentioned, I mostly listen to audiobooks on Scribe and you get several credits a month for the one monthly subscription with it. So it's great if you want to listen to multiple audiobooks per month. I usually only listen to about one per month so I never go over the limit that you get with Scribe, but they've got all sorts of the classics in nonfiction, as well as a lot of the new releases. So if there's anything you're looking for, I usually go to Scribe first to see if I can get it. And even if it's just for trying to see and figure out if it's a book that I want to purchase later on, it's a good way to do it. It's cheaper than having to pay for gas to get to your local library each month. So let's get into the methods that I use for taking notes on audiobooks that I'm listening to. And I like to be as simple as possible so that it's quick access because, you know, you're usually listening to audiobooks when you're trying to do something else or when you're during your commute. And so it can be challenging if you've got to have an elaborate system for note taking. I'd rather be able to get the main points across in the note taking and then be able to go back and do more of the smart notes afterwards. So I, I first off do try to use the bookmark feature of most of the audiobook players. It's helpful for taking quick notes to link back if you need to go back and refer to a section because one thing I dislike about audiobooks is that usually they don't have the chapter titles and sometimes it doesn't align perfectly with the actual book structure. So that can make it challenging. And so if you take good bookmarks and make note of what the subheading of each section you're listening to is, it's going to be a lot easier to go back to and figure out where you're trying to extract more information later on. So the other thing that helps with this process that is a bit of a hack that I've figured out is you can get the sample of any book on Kindle and you don't have to read the book or consider purchasing it even, but this gives you the full table of contents or the chapter structure of the book. So I usually start my audiobook by going in and laying out the chapter structure based on what it looks like in the Kindle version. And then I've got a bit of a framework to know what's coming up in the audiobook and know what I'm trying to take notes on and keep it organized a little bit more that way. So which note taking app you're going to use makes the biggest difference in terms of the ease of access to dropping in notes as you are listening to something. And my preferred method for this is to just use Apple's built-in notes because 
you can swipe down on the screen and get it in the control panel without having to log in and open up an app. So I find that to be the quickest access. It can even remember the most recent note that you've had from the off screen. And so that's a great way to set up your audiobook as you're listening through to it and always have it very quickly accessible if you're gonna type out your notes. The other thing that I like to do quite a bit, and it works great right inside of Apple Notes too, is using the dictation feature to just read out a sentence or two about whatever notes I'm doing, or even reading out a quote is very easy this way. So I use dictation a lot when it comes to taking audiobook notes because it makes it very quick in getting that information down in the app wherever I want to store it. And the best advice I can give you for choosing a note-taking app is to play around with the different options that you've got and figure out which one's quickest to access or easiest for you to use. Maybe that's where you want your long-term storage of notes to go, so you'll have to consider the file structure in that sense. Or if you're going to transfer it over somewhere else, that's usually where I like something like Apple Notes that's so easily accessible to just quickly get it down. And then later on when I go to review the book and take smart notes on it, I'm going to transfer it into a form that makes more sense long term. So I hope you like the video. If you've stuck around this long, you probably recognize the value of reading in terms of the mentorship it provides and helping you to accelerate that learning curve towards your dream goals and finding your flow. And if you wanna learn more about that, check out some more of these videos here. And until next time, dream on and find your flow.